Hey, my name is Lev. Uh, I'm the principal engineer at Unify ID. Uh, we're doing, uh, we're revolutionizing authentication by detecting all the things that make you unique. Things like the way you walk. Um, everybody walks in a different way, and we can tell that from uh, sensors in your smartphone or wearables. Um, and that's only one of a hundred different, different attributes that we uh, data mine to, uh, to figure out your, a unique model for each user. So um, thanks to Unify D, in a few years, hopefully you won't need passwords anymore to use your favorite services. Um, so yeah, um, like uh, Cindy said, we want the RSA Innovation Sandbox uh, South by Southwest here, security and privacy category, um, as well as TechCrunch Disrupt got second place. Um, so let me talk to you about our technology now. Um, so we're doing a lot of real-time machine learning, and machine learning is best ha handled on GPUs. So uh, I'll talk a bit about um, how, how we can scale those GPUs using Docker. Um, and you know we're running everything on the cloud. We're, we're a startup, so uh, I'll talk about uh, Amazon EC2 and Azure and how you can uh, deploy scalable GPU microservices on these uh, popular cloud providers. Um, and of course, I'll talk about Docker, which is the reason that we're all here. Um, we love Docker. So uh, I'll talk about how to run NVIDIA uh, containers, and then I will talk about how to scale them. Um, the first part is kind of easy. The second is more technically involved. Um, so let's start. Uh, how does Docker play with NVIDIA? Um, and the answer is, um, if you figure out how to how, how kind of um, NVIDIA drivers work with a Docker container, um, they play pretty well with each other. There is a small utility that NVIDIA wrote called NVIDIA Docker, which is basically um, a small wrapper around Docker, and all it does is it installs the NVIDIA drivers from the host inside the container, so then containerized applications can have access to CUDA um, uh, and the drivers, and it also mounts the devices from the host inside the container. It's actually so simple. Um, you can just replace it with an alias of Docker, uh, and this is exactly the same thing. This, this Docker command will um, mount the devices. If you have more than one GPUs, it's gonna mount NVIDIA 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, NVIDIA CTL, which is the controller, UVM, the universal memory model for moving memory from CPU space to GPU space. Um, all of this is stuff that you need to mount inside your container to be able to run GPU-aware applications. Um, let me talk about Docker Compose. So the same thing, um, I just this didn't get rendered uh, nicely, but uh, the, the main thing is you can see that um, I'm just mounting the same devices and I'm doing the same thing, and this is how I can orchestrate GPU uh, microservices. Uh, I'm mounting the drivers, I'm mounting my devices, and this will give me exactly the same environment for running uh, GPU-aware applications uh, as it would be running them on the host. Okay, so this is, this is about scalability, which I think is the, the most interesting part. And scalability for GPUs is kind of a, a thing that doesn't really, it's not really out there. Nobody's doing like scalable GPUs yet. Um, we'll talk about what's available in the market um, in terms of Mesos or Kubernetes, kind of off the shelf things you can use for uh, scaling your GPUs. And then we'll talk about our proof of concept, which, which is basically how we're doing scaling for GPUs at Unify ID. Um, and uh, one thing I want to say is, um, if you are used in the scalability in the micro services kind of field, um, it's different for machine learning because the requirements are kind of different. So horizontal scaling with kind of a database that you use to store all your data from all your horizontal workers doesn't really work here. Because for our model, we have a model for each user. We're learning about everybody uh, at the same time. And if we had to dump the model in a database and then reload it every time we scale, that will add a lot of overhead. So we prefer to keep the model inside the instance for as long as possible. So this is called sticky load balancing. And I'll talk about it um, more extensively later. So like I said, Mesos offers um, GPUs as a first order resource. Um, you can basically advertise GPUs and workers can pick up uh, an integer number of GPUs, so not, not uh, a subset, not 0.5 GPUs. And uh, I think right now, as if you're doing scalable GPUs in production, Mesos is probably uh, the first thing you should look at. Um, there's a very interesting blog post that came out uh, last week which talks about how you can do this, and um, I'll, I have it in the end of my references. Um, but basically, this is it. You basically set up your Mesos master, 
uh, on, let's say this is on localhost, and your message agent um, it has to use those isolation primitives for uh, Docker runtime, of course, for running containers, and uh, devices for having access to uh, the NVIDIA devices, and uh, GPUs less NVIDIA, which is uh, for advertising and receiving advertisements for GPUs. Uh, and the same thing, when you go on the worker, message execute, uh, pay attention to the GPU resources capability. That's the one that you need to, to tell Mesos that, oh, this worker will actually, um, can offer GPU resources for execution. So if you run these commands, uh, what you expect to see is that command over there, which is NVIDIA SMI. So that's just, um, that just tells you how much usage the GPU has. It just looks like this. It's uh, how much memory and what's the, what's the temperature. It's part of the NVIDIA drivers. Um, nothing too crazy. But um, you can run it on workers, so this is, this is pretty impressive. Uh, let's, go, let's talk about Kubernetes. So for Kubernetes, this is still a work in progress. There's a design document, and if you are working on this uh, merge request from the open source community, that's great, and we greatly thank you for your contributions. Uh, and um, it hasn't shipped yet, so that it's in an alpha version, so you can advertise GPUs, but it's, it's very alpha. You can't really consume them yet. And uh, you know, obviously you can't use uh, less, like less than one GPU, so you can have multiple processes in one GPU, but that's not Kubernetes' fault, that's NVIDIA's fault, and I'm gonna talk about it later. Um, so let me talk to you about our solution now. So to scale microservices for machine learning, um, the first logical step is to make a REST API. So our REST API is very simple and kind of looks like this. You have a, a train request that you use for training with any kind of data. Um, we are sending a list of S3 files. Um, actually, it's URLs to the S3 bucket that we're saving our data. And basically, the machine learning service is going to take them, uh, train a model on this data, and learn more about its user. After you're done training, you're calling input, and that will basically give you some new data that you can use to validate against your model. And then uh, when you're done, because these are long running jobs, you have kind of a job ID um, system. So every job, you get a job ID and then you can query it to see when it's done. Uh, and that's done by output. So if you trained, you gave me some input of, of new files that you want to validate. Um, it's going to take a while, a few seconds maybe if it's a lot of data. So that's why you query with your job ID and when it's done, you get a result. In our case, it's what's the probability that each user is themselves? What's the probability that the data are consistent with the model that we have for that user? Um, and that's a very basic REST API that we open sourced. We open sourced the Flask server as well for it. Uh, you can plug it with TensorFlow in the back end and it will just run. So that's, that's the first step, RESTify. Let's talk about um, multi-threading. So, um, GPUs are different in terms of threads than CPUs. So for CPUs, you can have a worker thread um, that takes one core. Um, the problem is for GPUs, you only can only have one process per one GPU core. So there's, there's kind of a bottleneck that you don't see between uh, workers that occupy a thread and TensorFlow, which basically occupies all of your GPU cores. Um, so you will, you will need to kind of write your own GPU scheduler as part of TensorFlow. So TensorFlow gives you the tools to do that. Um, it's, just, it's just like a manual task. You have to write a load balancer. Um, and it depends, you know, it depends, I guess, on your application. Um, so for our case, we talked about sticky threads. So these threads are sticky, which means if a user generates um, a model, he's going to get a thread. That thread is going to stick around for a long time. Uh, same thing on TensorFlow. If, if a user trained the model on TensorFlow, that's gonna stick around. Obviously, we wanna reuse the GPU core, so the session is gonna close and reopen again whenever we want to authenticate that user. Okay, so now that we talked about how to set it up on one instance with CPUs and GPUs, uh, let's talk about how to make it distributed. Uh, the, the proof of concept system that we're proposing is a sticky load balancer. Uh, it works with Nginx, when a user registers, you go to a registration microservice that we have containerized right here, and that will go and issue a dynamic DNS update on our bind server. That will give each user basically their own uh, machine, which is not really a machine, it's a C name to a, a big machine that a lot of people share, but it will give you your own URL. So if I'm user foobar, I will get a URL 
foobar.unify.id, for example, which is just an alias for one of our big GPU machines. Uh, when this is done, um, bind, now the, our dynamic DNS server knows how to route requests from that user to his sticky machine. So we know that all requests from that user are gonna go to the same place. Uh, and that's what happens on the left here. Every other request except from register gets routed to that one machine that has the model of the user. So what, what's, what are the benefits of this? Low overhead, you don't need to transfer the model between either processes, threads, or machines. Um, it's, it's good for utilizing um, uh, Nginx as your load balancer because after you register, all it does is basically proxying requests. And as you, as you guys know, uh, Nginx is very fast at proxying requests. So after the, the red part happens, the left part happens like this very fast. Um, so there are some obvious advantages. Um, let me guide you through kind of the process a bit better. So um, the client sends a registration request with his ID. Let's say his ID is Fubar. Nginx takes that right to the registration microservice. Uh, for our case, it's just a Flask app that handles our database. Um, and what this does, that can, you can be as smart as you want about load balancing here. You can take the health of each machine, uh, and you can have, for example, machine A has a health of 10, B has a health of 90%, and C is 100%. So obviously in this case you want to pick machine C because that's the more healthy one. Um, when you do that, the registration microservice issues a dynamic DNS update to our bind server. Uh, and that, that is the simplest protocol um, anybody could think of. Just one line update and you're just adding a C name and alias for that user to point to that server which is healthy. So now all future requests from that user will go to server C. Uh, and that's indeed what happens when the user wants to train with some data, we will send his request to server C, and that server will forever hold his model, forever hold his data, no overhead in moving that model around, uh, and it's good for scaling. Uh, yeah, and this is my Nginx config for making this happen. Um, the important part here, uh, register is just a simple proxy box. The important part here is this part, uh, this basically takes the ID of the user from the header and adds it as part of the URL. So now uh, every header with a specific, um, every, every request with a specific header will now route to the dedicated machine. Um, in this case, we use the Neko server. Uh, you could use um, the, our Python ML microservice that I showed you uh, or any other microservice for machine learning. Uh, and this is our Docker Compose. Uh, it's composed of uh, four microservices, so we have Sticky load balancer or slob is based on Nginx. And we have an echo server which acts as um, a placeholder for the machine learning server. We have a registration microservice which handles uh, database stuff. And uh, of course, our dynamic DNS that everything listens to, and that's the one that directs traffic. Um, and here are some benchmarks. So, NS update uh, the latency increases with the number of hosts. Um, and if you see here on the bottom, I tried with 100 hosts, 1,000 hosts, 5,000. Uh, one issue here is that if these are GPU machines at 25,000 hosts, the cost is gonna be 61 cents per machine per day. So you're looking at, you're looking at maybe like 15K a day. So I, I don't think anybody's gonna be able to get 25,000 GPU machines on cloud like Azure or AWS. But if you do, hey, you can. Uh, let's talk about the future a bit. Um, the problem is that application level parallelism doesn't really exist for GPU. One process, one GPU core, it's really bad. What, what exists is MPS, NVIDIA MPS, which is a multiprocess server. Basically that can take up to 16 different CUDA contexts, so uh, this is any GP, GPU stuff, and schedule it on the same core. So you can have 16 TensorFlow services, in theory, running on one GPU instance. And that's great, that, that's where we wanna get with our microservices and TensorFlow, everything speaking to one GPU core, everything happening uh, in a scalable way. Uh, so the problem is TensorFlow doesn't work with this, so we have filed a request uh, and an issue and we're working to make it uh, MPS supported by TensorFlow. Uh, Kubernetes, like I said, it's a work in progress, so uh, 
if you're on the open source community, go help Kubernetes get GPU support. And for the future, I think we'll, we'll, it will be interesting to have a more holistic approach on scheduling. Um, heterogeneous ML jobs. So heterogeneous means both CPU and GPU. And it would be great to have something that looks at the TensorFlow um, model and tells you how this should be uh, scheduled for best performance on, and parallelization on CPU cores as well as uh, GPU instances. Um, and that, that kind of exists for CPU, it's called MPI. Maybe an MPI for TensorFlow would be awesome to have. Uh, and that's it. Um, yeah, uh, I will also say that Unified is hiring and we're looking for some awesome Docker uh, wizards. So if you are one, come talk to me. Um, and this is the references. I will upload the slides um, later um, to our blog. So thank you very much.